strong and mobile, professional and well-coordinated. Any of these epithets can be attributed to the Kazakh army. For a relatively short time, it has managed to become a shield and a pillar of the country's independence. This year, the armed forces celebrate its 29th anniversary since it was founded. The date is forever entrenched in the national calendar. The decree of the first president was the document that started the history of the armed forces. Signed on May 7, 1992, it marked the creation of a modern Kazakh army. The Defender of the Fatherland Day was considered a professional holiday for almost two decades. Following the amendments to the legislation, the date became a state holiday and celebrated nationwide. You know, Everyone, whether he is in the military or a civilian, will have a memory of the event forever. I have a lot of memories, but the one that is the most special for me is when the decree was signed on the creation of our own armed forces. I remember feeling very proud at that time because I will serve my homeland. Bakhidjan Yirtaev, the first chief of general staff of Kazakhstan's armed forces, recalls that the news about the creation of the Kazakh army was announced when he was far from home. He was serving in Potsdam, Germany. I was serving in Germany when the Soviet Union collapsed. The regiment I was commanded was in a city called Potsdam, a political city where the Treaty on Nazi Germany's surrender was signed. Our regiment was the first to leave, and we were asked many questions, of course. Even my German friends asked me, where are you going now? I told them that I'm going home. Back at home in Kazakhstan, important changes were taking place. The previous military associations and units, training grounds and military equipment, warehouses and property of the United Armed Forces of the Commonwealth countries, which were placed in Kazakhstan, were transferred to the jurisdiction of the country by the decree of the Supreme Commander-in-Chief. The first military doctrine was adopted one year later. Under the doctrine, Kazakhstan will ensure military security, preventing wars and armed conflicts. The military also opposes political power and superiority. In 1992, it was in 1992, the decree for the creation of the armed forces was signed on May 7, 1992. At that time, I was serving in the 39th Separate Reconnaissance Aviation Regiment in Balkhash as a senior technician. The news of the creation of the armed forces was told to us in the general regimental formation. We were told that we've become part of the Air Force of the Republic of Kazakhstan. Our first task was to guard the weapons, equipment and ammunition, as well as always be prepared for combat, even though our force was small in number, and to guard the infrastructures. It was a difficult period and I understood the situation. Many wanted to return to their country. Ukrainians back to Ukraine, Azerbaijanis, there were even cadets who were studying, but they also wanted to leave. But they were allowed to complete their studies under the wise decision of our president and comedy chairman, Sagadat Kozakhmetovich. Let them choose, he said. The biggest decision was made by the Supreme Commander-in-Chief. He decided that men should take the oath. Many returned home, especially those who didn't want to take the oath twice. Previously, the armed forces didn't have enough officers and they could hardly train their military personnel. There was no time to waste. Therefore, the military academy was created based on Almaty School. Specialists were trained in 11 areas and short-term courses were offered. It wasn't hard for us to operate. The technology we had to ensure our combat readiness was resource-based, and the weapons allowed us to perform tasks for the intended purposes. 
The only issue we had was people. It was difficult to recruit more members, because back then, aviation specialists weren't trained in Kazakhstan. We only had a higher flying school of civil aviation in Aktube. The school trained personnel for civil aviation, but there are also courses that were introduced in Logovaya, which saw junior lieutenants graduated in six months. They joined the unit and we had to get them prepared, because at the time you don't have the opportunity to master a certain skill or learn a speciality deep enough. Colonel Ibrayev is an engineer who treats his chosen profession cautiously. He went to the same school as Yuri Gagarin. Pilot was a famous profession back then, and there was a huge competition at school where only the best student could enter the flying unit. Only two were selected out of 20 candidates. Colonel Ibrayev had received his documents from the military registration and enlistment office quite late, therefore he missed the deadline. A year later, he entered the competition again but for the engineering unit instead of flying. He understood that flights are not dependent only on pilots. His current task is to prepare the plane before a flight. It wasn't easy at first. In the early years after the independence and after the creation of the armed forces and the state of technology, as I said earlier, we operated the planes successfully, but in the future we still had to continue the operations. Maintenance and repairs were necessary too. The country's top leaders and the leaders of armed forces took all the measures to ensure everything went smooth and purchased military weapons and equipment as well as ensured that we were able to repair and modernize the equipment. It took about two to three years. We have almost 50% of the aircraft fleet, including the latest aircraft and helicopters. This is our Sukhoi Su-30 at the Karaganda airfield. This is our Aero L-39 combat training aircraft in Balkhash. These aircrafts have gone through major repairs and modernization. And these are the C-205 military transport aircraft. We also have the Mi-35 and the Mi-131 SHA military airplanes and helicopters. The first task was to fly the planes. Colonel Ibrahim's son, Abilai, followed his footsteps. He started preparing to enter the flying unit since he was at school. He began by being involved in parachuting and from there in many other aviation-related activities. The young cadet performed well in the aviation center and military school. Abilai entered the Military Institute of Air Defense Forces where he learned to fly. The very first aircraft that I flew was when I was at school, the TL-2000, which is now placed at the State Aviation Center in Nur Sultan City. At the flying school, I also learned how to fly the Aero L-39 in the second year. The TL-2000 is a light engine small aircraft that I use specifically to teach first piloting skills, while the L-39 is a jet combat aircraft that we had to learn first before flying the Sukhoi Su-30 and Su-27 and the MiG-29. I never told my son what he should do in his life, especially when it comes to profession. But of course, in my heart, I would like him to continue doing what I'm doing. We always organize holidays in the military unit. Day of the aviation, day of armed forces. So during these holidays, the whole Air Defense Force unit will be out in the airfields looking at the demonstration of aviation technology. They usually brought their families with them. I have a photograph of little children about the same age as my grandson, around four, five, seven years old. The experience boarding the plane and looking at different aircraft. I brought my son too when he was small. After he finished school, I asked him what he would like to do, and he said that he wants to go to the flight school. I told him that it's important to choose what to be, not who to be. Also, he must choose the profession throughout his life. <laughs> Profession, I'll be at the margin of Cedar. 
and Abulai choose his profession. He entered the Military Institute of Air Defense Forces and six years after graduation, he received his first state award. The Ibin Order of the Second Degree was awarded to the S-295 Military Transport Crew for their courage. The pilots successfully landed the heavy plane in the most difficult conditions. Ну, в тот день он должен был, вот в прошлый год, год назад было, значит, практически все экипажи военно-транспортной авиации. A year ago, all the military transport aviation crews had to transport our citizens from the neighboring countries during the pandemic. We had to organize repatriation flights to Russia and Belarus and from China and Turkey to bring back our citizens. The first flight was to Belarus, and on the same day, we had to fly to Shkalov's Air Base in Moscow. Well, somewhere near Moscow. At first, everything was okay, in a normal mode. But then, the operations officer on duty and I realized that Ward 04 was absent, and the front landing gear couldn't function properly. So there was a systems failure. At that moment, the plane was circling in the air, near the air base area. The incident happened on 4th May 2020. During the planned flight from Nur Sultan to Aktube, we had an abnormal situation on board. The front landing gear couldn't function as it only remained in a neutral position. We did all we could to release it, but we didn't succeed. So the crew commander decided to fly to the nearest airbase in Jetigen city in the Almaty region and made an emergency landing there. Лететь на базовый аэродром в город Житиген в Алматинской области и выполнять посадку там. Такая данная ситуация, она была третья за вот э, время эксплуатации этого самолета. Одна была в Канаде. Вот. This happened during the third operation of the aircraft. The first incident happened in Canada. Similar case with the front landing gear, and the second incident happened in Africa. The third incident happened here. There's a risk when flying a plane. Landing is the most difficult element in aviation, especially landing a heavy transport aircraft. When landing, the plane doesn't change position, but due to inertia, the plane would tilt forward a little bit. This poses a risk of overturning, fire spark, and even a disaster, depending on the landing speed. It all depends on the crew commander, their coordinated actions with the onboard engineer and technician who decided to land the plane. Имеет риск перевернуться там искрение там возникновение пожара и так далее, даже катастрофа. Поэтому здесь зависело от командира экипажа, их согласованные действия там с борт инженером, борт техником. The entire crew never would have thought that something wrong would happen. When we sat in the crew seats, we didn't see what's going on in the cockpit. We were in contact with the flight director who gave us instructions. They told us that the aircraft is less visible and they could see only half of the plane. So we thought we have to make sure to rectify this issue and ensure our safety. But there wasn't any other option except for emergency landing. There are three main support, which are two landing gear struts and one front gear. First, we tried to use the main landing gear to decrease the speed. When the speed decreases, we lowered the nose of the plane and from there, we could already see the sparks because of the large friction of the body of the plane and the wind. But the sparks eventually stopped. There was no fire, nothing bad happened. We landed the plane with minimal damage. And then, when the speed 
а носовую часть, и там уже пошли искры, ну вот это все, потому что средний самолет большой. И самолет плавно, но ну, остановился, возгорания ничего не было, самолет ну, с минимальными повреждениями остался. Вот и знаю, командир экипажа, это майор Зайнудин, один из, знаю, как первоклассного личика, опытного. The crew commander is Major Zainuldin Jenis. We knew him as a first-class pilot. He's experienced and has great skill. Knowing this, I felt very calm throughout the whole period. I wasn't feeling anxious or scared. Deep in my heart, I know that everything is fine. After the incident, I was preparing to go home as usual like any other ordinary day. My wife learned about the incident in the media and arrived at the landing base 10 to 15 minutes before we landed. She found out who was the commander, but she didn't know the exact person. She asked me, was it him? And I told her, not him, but us. I told her that everything is all right. The most important thing is not to panic. During this trying time, the real qualities of people are revealed. Some people are cold-blooded, some are considerate. But all of this is not my work alone and not the crew commander. It's the team's effort. Our onboard technician doesn't fly the plane or land it, but he gave us moral support. Same goes for our onboard mechanic. Their encouraging words gave us confidence and strength. Even the smallest of help can have a big effect on a person. Airplanes, armored personnel carriers and tanks. Huge cars lined up at the National Military Patriotic Center in the capital city. An integral exposure unfolded under the open air. The event's main visitors are those who are dreaming to serve in the armed forces. The best samples of military equipment that were or are in service in the modern army are on display. Captain Baigaziev attended the event with his family. Today is a rare moment where Papa is at home with the family. BTR, BMP, tank, this is the main technique that is standing on the weapons. Armored personnel carriers, infantry fighting vehicles, tanks. These are the main vehicles that are in service. These are the most frequently used vehicles in our republic's armed forces. Jandos Baigaziev commands the Airborne Assault Forces. After graduating from the Almaty Military University, he entered one of the elite units in the capital. Elite military personnel are those who possess unchallenged ability to solve almost any combat mission. The tasks are the same as before, the seizure of a bridgehead in the deaths of the enemy's defense. Our brigade prepares in terms of physical training, learning military sciences, and we have all the material, educational and technical base. We make sure that our paratroopers are skilled in performing a combat mission. We make sure we have all the necessary resources needed. Captain Jando says that he began dreaming to enter military service since he was in school. He wanted to be like his father. Meanwhile, the daughters of Lieutenant Colonel Jumadilov are proud of their father and hero. In October 2007, he carried four people out of a burning apartment building, a mother and her three children. That night, I came to pick up my mother. She was at my aunt's. When we were on the way home, we saw a house that was on fire. I remembered seeing children playing there during the day. So I went inside and first of all, I turned off the gas cylinder. Then I began to take out the people in the house. I wasn't thinking about myself at that time. I just imagined for a moment that these children could have been mine. <laughs> Captain 
The next morning, the commander of the unit in which Azamat Jumadilov served wrote a report to the ministry and requested to encourage the brave paratrooper. He was awarded the Khalik Kaharmani title for his bravery. There are many non-fictional stories that were turned into feature films where the main characters are the defenders of the fatherland.